Time for the first round proper in the 150th anniversary season of the Emirates FA Cup. If you weren't already aware, from every single round, from the first qualifying round all the way to the final, I'm being sent to a different game to celebrate 150 years of the Emirates FA Cup. And so far we've seen Jersey Bulls in the first qualifying round, Blythe Spartans in the second qualifying round, Mask United in the third qualifying round, and then Marine AFC in the fourth qualifying round. So far we have done 1,957 miles in our journey so far. For those of you that are new around here, each round I get sent a hint to kind of reveal and tease where I'm off to. Let's go and put it on. Give me a sec. Oh no. How does it get worse every week? How is it? For those who want to know, I can't feel my head. This is so tiny. Let's tweet out a photo. For some reason, this feels like a low point. <laughs> right, so I've done the tweet, as you can see on screen, but no one actually seems to be able to know. Let me just message someone and actually find out where we're off to. It's Portsmouth, and they're playing Harrow Borough too. This is genuinely going to be an amazing game. Let's get going. I can't wait. But take this off first, then we'll get going. <laughs> Come on. It is very early. It's time to set off to Fratton Park on this lovely winter's day. So, we've established today is Pompey against Harrow Borough. We've also spoke about the fact that it's 150 years of the Emirates FA Cup this season. So what is both sides history in the Emirates FA Cup? Well, Portsmouth have actually won the FA Cup twice, once in 1939 and the second time their famous win in 2008 with the side managed by Harry Redknapp. So they are a side with a rich history in this competition. Will this season be another history making season for Pompey? On the other hand, Harrow Borough's best ever run was in 2010-2011 where they got to the second round proper, so one round on from here, where they eventually lost to Newport County 3-1. It would be incredible if they can have another run like that this season. A win today would be absolutely historic for Harrow, away at a club like Portsmouth. Previous winners of the Emirates FA Cup, it would be massive. Today's game is genuinely going to be insane. Let's get to Portsmouth. I've now arrived at Fratton Park. Let's take a look around and then let's speak to some people about what the Emirates FA Cup means to them. We're at a Football League Stadium for the first time in our journey. Let's have a look around. Prohibited items, cowbells. Aren't Portsmouth quite famous for having someone who rings a bell for the, the entire game? <laughs> oh, I hate that he's been successful. There we go, we've had a look around Fratton Park. We've had, we've had more than a look. Currently stood beside the pitch. About three hours till kick off. We're gonna have a bit more of a look around and we're gonna interview a few people about what the Emirates FA Cup means to them and their football clubs. But, pitch is just there. I'm like, stick me on half time. Turned them on the bench, the pitch is just over there. To be honest though, these seats are very comfy. If I was in the bench, I'd just stay here, but nah. Not today, Gaffer. <laughs> We've got the opportunity to go in the tunnel as well, so obviously I'm going to take that. This is what the players see when they walk out for a game at Fratton Park. Remember who you represent, you walk out, fans are there. Look at that. Abdul Cleek. Obviously, winning the FA Cup, obviously. That's been the favourite moment ever. And reaching two finals, really. It's been absolutely epic. It's undescribable. It absolutely goose bumps all over. Sheer joy and excitement. It's just the best feeling you could ever have winning an FA Cup. Legendary. It would be absolutely legendary if we could do that performance all over again. And can I get a score prediction out of you? 
Um, today, 4 0, written all over it, I think. That's all I'm saying on that. <laughs> Tom from 4 0, written all over it. Uh, winning it back in 2008 is probably our favourite memory and then we, we came quite close uh, a year or two after that as well. Uh, I was there at Wembley in 2008 and it was one of the best days that this football club's ever had. And we've had some really dark days but that was probably one of the brighter ones. Um, yeah, we, we absolutely loved it. It was probably, I think it's still the highest attendance for at least an FA Cup final at Wembley. It was Pompey Cardiff. Um, and it was, yeah, one of the most unbelievable games of football I've ever seen. Uh, we'd love a tie here against our neighbours down the road. Um, we, we've had one of those in, in a cup competition the last couple of years. It didn't quite go as well as we were hoping it to. Um, or, you know, it, it, it gives lower league sides an opportunity to play some of the big boys but that the, they're hoping to follow in the footsteps. If we drew a Premier League side here at Fratton Park, we had Arsenal, um, was one of the last FA Cup games I remember being here at Fratton Park. And that was just before COVID hit. So it was one of our last with a full capacity crowd. A game like that, again, would be lovely if we got to that point. We've got quite a lot of heavy focus on the league this season. Yeah. But we don't mind an FA Cup run. It's the magic of the FA Cup, isn't it? So we'll, we'll take whatever we get given. Premier League tie would be ideal for okay. us. Can I get a score prediction out of you? Uh, I want to go for a 4 0 written all over at win today, Ellis. <laughs> so we're now inside Fratton Park with half an hour before kickoff. I've actually brought my girlfriend Jodie along this week. Hello. How are you doing? So, obviously, 150 years of the Emirates FA Cup. What is your favourite memory from that 150 years? I think when Leicester won them, because it was really emotional. I think they deserved it. Um, yeah, I remember watching on TV, it was my dad. It's getting exciting. Half an hour to kick off. It's going to be crazy. Time Portsmouth won Harrow nil. You could probably say Portsmouth deserve it, but the thing to bring from this is Harrow is still in it. A goal changes everything. Only 1 0. It's going to be an interesting second half. We're in the Harrow end for the second half. Loads of fans here. Over 600 of them have travelled down. Hopefully, they have something to cheer in the second half. Let's get into it. What's been your best memory as a Harrow fan in 150 years? <laughs> uh, this, of course, is the biggest game in the club's history, but before then, it would have been our 2-0 loss at home to Chesterfield in the first round 11 years ago in 2010. Uh, we had a team then that went on to the playoffs and finals in the Ethiopian Prem. So it was a great atmosphere, great game, and uh, you know we had chances where it could have gone either way. So we're looking for something similar here at Portsmouth. Speaking about that today, obviously, I think you guys are putting on a fantastic account of yourselves. Only 1-0 down, as you say, biggest game in your club's history. What would it mean to you if you could get a goal in the second half and maybe force a replay? It would mean the world, honestly. I've not seen us score a goal in the uh, in the FA Cup first round, let alone win. So it would mean the absolute world for us to, to, to get a goal. To get them back at Earl's Mead would be a pleasure as well. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see what happens in the second half. Hopefully we get a win. You don't often get to come to places like Fratton Park where you're playing a team that used to be in the Premiership and has won the competition itself. So for us, it's a big deal to have this experience considering where we're from and the history we've had to this day. I mean, I mean everything, it'll give the club the financial boost we need after COVID, it would give our fans a day to remember, and more importantly, it'll give everyone a reason to just carry on supporting locally, and it shows 
that even without the biggest budget, the biggest ground or the best fans, you can achieve places like this. Yeah, can we get a score prediction for the second half? 2-1 arrow. Second half is underway. <laughs> Just before we do our outro this time, we've actually got the opportunity to potentially get an interview with the Portsmouth manager and the Harrow manager as well. So, let's try and get an interview with them and get their thoughts on this game and the Emirates FA Cup as a whole. So obviously it's obviously a massive disappointment to lose, but it's been an amazing run. What has the run meant to yourself in the Emirates FA Cup this season? I think it's a mixture of things. The obvious one is finance. Yep. As you see, the chairman smiling to my left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be talking to him in a minute about the budget. Um, yeah, fi finance is, is this, the holy grail for, for clubs at our level. As a manager and a player, you don't look at the finance side. I know it's important to the club, yep. so that, that part of it is, is, is huge, especially over the last couple of years. But I think you talk to the younger players about a performance here could change your life. Yeah. A win here could change your life. And I'm as ambitious as some of my players, and we all want to get on and we want to get to the highest level. I'd love to take Harrow to the highest level. But if you're putting yourself in a shop window where you're doing well and maybe playing a certain way, it doesn't happen overnight, but the stock of everyone has rose after, over the last few weeks. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's been great. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's really all I can say. They've been, they've been great. So, Danny, obviously, most importantly, through to the second round, what does it mean to you for an FA Cup run? Like, what would it mean to yourself and the club to push on further, mate, maybe go deep into the competition this season? Yes, well, every FA Cup run has to start somewhere. Yeah. And um, we've got a win today. And we're, we're pleased to, to get the win, to get the clean sheet and to get into the next round. Um, I want to give massive credit to Harrow Bow. I thought they were, they, were, they were brilliant. I thought, you know, Steve Baker should be so proud of his, his players. I thought they were an absolute um, brilliant advert for non-league football. And, um, yeah, we've, we've, we've managed to win, which we're pleased about. And we're, we're pleased to be in the next round. And we look forward to the draw come, come tomorrow. Yeah, dream tie for the next round? To name uh, for us, we would just like a home tie and, and to try to be able to find a tie that we can win and, and hopefully get to the third round. Yeah, well, fair play. Hopefully our paths cross again later in the competition and best of luck with it. Thank you. Top man. There we have it then. Full time in the Emirates FA Cup. Portsmouth won, Harrow Borough nil. I think Harrow Borough can be extremely proud of themselves and the journey they went on this season, as we just heard from their manager at the end there. The financial gain and the, the rise in stock for the club as a whole will be absolutely massive from this run they've had. Although they've ended at the first round, but the run they've had to go on to get here has genuinely been magnificent. Heard from Danny Cowley there as well, hoping to push on further in the competition this year. If you want to see more content from this year's 150th anniversary season of the Emirates FA Cup, make sure to subscribe to the Emirates FA Cup YouTube channel. You'll also be able to see all the content from my journey in this year's competition as well. Thank you for watching. I've been Ellis and I'll see you in the second round. Bye.